another episode of the provocative podcast i was waiting for the signal over here to start yeah, kind of delayed a little bit. <laughs> you delayed it a little bit all right guys welcome to another episode um yeah i'm excited for this episode so today we have chris p the husband the husband <laughs> uh as our guest today uh, no idea what we're gonna talk about guys yeah i just wanted to bring him on i have some questions for him you get to know him a little bit more and then i have a few questions about a relationship that he's gonna answer so you girls get the in a little bit on that so we about it in on bad terms is what it's like. <laughs> no um but let's get into an intro first so i was a little uh hesitant on giving this intro but chris is like no i think it would be good for you for you to share with them first so if you oh, have been okay i was like what? what are you talking about uh if you have been watching my youtube video burr, 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 burr. Well, hold on hold on wait 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 wait. how do i go back to that screen give me a second give me a second give me a second what are you trying to put wait wait where is it okay go okay uh if you guys have been watching my stories and if you've been watching my youtube you can obviously tell that i'm doing a lot of cardio and i have been you know doing a cut right because i did the challenge with my girls my girls are killing it but mine's a little bit more than just a cut all right so i have decided that i am going to compete oh fuck i had the volume <laughs> <Yes>. down <laughs> I don't think you can hear it. Oh, okay. No, I can't hear it. It's an um, applause. It's an applause. Okay. I had the volume down there. So I will be competing in this weekend will be eight weeks. So actually a little bit less than eight weeks. Um, actually six and a half weeks for my first show that I have to qualify for. Because um, I'm trying to get my pro card. So I have to do a, a show first. Um, hopefully qualify. That's the goal. And then um, Damn, do this table's far. A, uh, Olympia Amateur to try to get my pro card. Um, you know, I'm going to be at the Olympia with dark sport. Everyone, a lot of my teammates are competing, especially all the girls I think are competing. So I was like, you know what? This would be the perfect time to compete. And, uh, you know, I feel like when I ended my prep two years ago, I was, I never said I would never compete again. And that's, and everyone would ask me like, are you never going to compete? And my answer was always like, no, I don't know. I'm never, I'm never the type of person that says, I'm never going to do this because people change, you change, um, you grow older, things just are, you know, as you get older and time changes, you change. So um, I was always like, no, I don't know. You know, I may, I may not, but I'm not going to say I'm never going to compete. Well, when Chris prepped this year, I wasn't ready like to compete. I was like, you know, no, I don't want to compete. I'm really happy with my lifestyle. Well, about two months ago, I told him, I was like, I don't know what it is, but and we hadn't even talked about competing or anything like there. It wasn't we weren't talking about it at home or anything. But I was like, I don't know what it is, but I am having this like big energy shift and pull towards this direction right now. Like, I feel like this is the moment. This is my moment. And he was like, well, if you he would love for me, he would have loved for me to prep during his prep. Um, but he respected my decision. So he he was very happy when I told him, like, hey um i want to compete um what were your thoughts when i told you that uh i mean i was excited for you i just uh didn't want to pressure you any because i mean i feel like it has to be something that you willingly want to do that way right. you accept all the responsibility that comes with it yeah so i'm actually like five and a half five and a half weeks into my prep i think i'm not keeping track. yeah um and it is tough <laughs> okay so she started late for mo for those of you that don't know you know a prep is usually 16 weeks which is four months uh you started at 13 weeks 13 mm -hmm. weeks out mm -hmm. yeah so it, it's a little little quicker than it needs to be but i was at a good starting yeah, point yeah you were you didn't let yourself go either so yeah so i was a really good starting point because as you guys know i keep a really good uh lifestyle so thankfully i was a good starting point but it's been rough that's why i am doing a shit ton of cardio right now like so so much so so much so i'm just really tired i want to keep up with a podcast every week guys but if for some chance one is not uploaded just know that it's because i'm having a really either no i wouldn't say bad mental week but i just am feeling low and that's what i told chris i was like you know this is this is the only hard thing about prep not only hard thing this is another thing added to prep is that i do a lot with work and with you girls and stuff that i need energy for and right now my energy is starting to go poopy 
Um, I'm like literally just like zombie mode right now. And um, today right now I feel a little bit better. And that's that I haven't um, had much caffeine besides my coffee. But yeah, guys, I will be competing. Um, I'm excited. I feel like this is the right time for me. I have this like gravity pull um, for it. And I'm just... I know it's going to get hard. It's going to get harder. It's hard right now. I think right now it's like at a level six out of 10. I know it's only going to get harder, but I'm doing my best to stay focused, to stay motivated to, you know, on the Stairmaster recently, I'll go on live and just talk to you girls or guys too. Like you guys help me so much get out of my head. And then two today, like I actually listened to like motivational videos and they really help. They truly help. Um, there was a quote today that said like, stop making pain your enemy and make it your friend. Like if you know that you're going through pain, it's more than likely because you're going to come out stronger. So make that fucking embrace the pain and make it your friend instead of being like, fuck, I'm hurting or fuck this. Like, cause I feel like I have that mentality. I'm a, I will be the first to admit I'm a complainer. So I'm quick to complain. So I'm usually like, Oh my God, it's going to get harder. I'm going to be in more pain. But now after listening to that thing message today, I was like, you know what? No, like if I'm in pain, it's a good thing. Like, let me take it in as a good thing because I know that it's because I'm making progress. If I feel like shit, it's because I look like shit with, with anyone who competes, the shittier you feel, the better you look. So if a person looks amazing on, in their photos, like shredded veins and shit, nine times out of 10, they feel like absolute garbage. So just a little FYI there, but you guys are the first to know, because I'm going to be announcing it on Saturday on my Instagram. So when I announce it, I expect all the clapping hands and hearts. Okay. All right. So I think that's all the intro I wanted to. You want to give intro of uh, Rosalia, the actual concert. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot the about Regida, that. If there's anything to say about Yeah. That. So we went to the Rosalia concert. Oh, yeah, you guys. Uh, I filmed right before leaving. Okay. So because of prep, I was very annoyed and frustrated because we very. had. <laughs> I wore these boots and the boots were comfortable. But if you were standing and. For as long as we were standing, they started to hurt my feet. So we got VIP early access, which just means we had to be there earlier to be able to get into the front earlier, right? To stand up in like the front of the stage earlier. So we had to leave the house by five. We showed, we got there at six. So it's like a 45 minute drive. Um, so we got there at six. We waited out in the line outside for like 40 minutes. And then we waited a in line inside for like an hour and 20 minutes. So we finally get inside at eight. She doesn't come on till nine 30. Okay. So I'm from like, I left my house at five, five to nine 30. I'm just annoyed. Okay. We've been sitting on her feet for three and a half hours. And I'm like, Oh my God, when is she going to come on? She finally comes on at nine 30 and I was starving. Cause it's my low carb day. I was exhausted cause I did both cardio sessions, but being in that front, was so fucking worth it like i don't know i know you thought so too yeah so i mean by no means am i a diehard rosalia fan yeah but her voice has always just amazed me like on songs and on youtube videos so like actually witnessing it firsthand was it, it brought tears to my i'm not gonna yeah. i'm not gonna sit here and lie like yeah her voice is beautiful and the performance was amazing. But yeah, we were standing at that gate in the very front for like four hours. Yeah. And I had to pee the whole fucking time. And you can't leave. And you can't leave, otherwise you lose your spot. So I don't know how the hell I managed to hold my Yeah, thankfully I just didn't drink water. But I was frustrated. I got to the point where I'm like, I'm leaving. And he's like, I'm not fucking leaving. You're, we're not leaving. And I was like, just, okay, just don't fucking talk to me right now. Just like, let me breathe. But I think if I wouldn't have been on prep, and I would have had a little bit more energy. It would have been a little bit better. It still sucked. The waiting time sucked. Um, also, we were talking. She didn't have an opening act. I think if she would have had an opening act, yes. like another singer or something. Like, yeah, so we were literally standing at the gate listening to like some just whack DJ. ass. Not, not even DJ. It was just like lobby music yeah. pretty much. And um, yeah, so, but, oh my God. I love Rosalia after this. I love her even more. Like I, it was amazing her production her video quality everything on stage was absolutely amazing on the next level and then her voice is just the prettiest voice i've ever heard in my entire life she's up there with christina aguilera Cher, ariana grande billy eilish like and rosalia top literally five like singers that just sing beautifully no don't need any fucking what is it called auto-tune auto -tune, nothing like her voice was just she made me tear up in a lot of the songs um chris teared up in one of the songs so it was just it was an amazing experience so that was really fun it was for me it was worth it and i would probably do it again for her because i the every day after that i kept talking about how amazing that experience was so that was great and then on friday when we went to forza regida i was okay 
Yeah, it was all right. You know, they sing a couple of uh, corridos that I like, and they sang them pretty pretty early on. So then we left early to beat the traffic. Oh yeah, because I don't like to drive. The thing with Hispanics is that they they drink a lot. So I just get scared that somebody's gonna think they're like, oh, I can drink, I can drive, I can drive, and then some shit's gonna happen. And we were in Chris's car, so I was just like, let's just risk all that and let's just go before. I don't like to deal with crowds and shit, anyways. So. We just left a little bit early, but we had seats and stuff, so we weren't standing. Yeah. It was good. I think the and that one had an opening act too. Yeah, had an opening act. We had seats. It was fine. Um, oh, we were just talking about how with uh, Mexicans when they're performing, though, they are the only performers that we know that get absolutely shit faced, shit faced on stage, and they perform. They yeah. still perform amazing, but they're literally downing bottles of tequila. And he had what uh, uh, whiskey? whiskey as well. Yeah, whiskey. I'm like, hell no. My ass would have been passed out on the floor already. I don't yeah, know how they, they do it. They the whole bottle within the first 30 minutes. I yeah, think. it's insane. But we love we love the Mexican concerts. We love we try to do them as much as we can when there's someone we enjoy. Because we also, we love them if they're good. If yeah. they're whack, then we're just kind of like, oh, we don't want to deal with all this shit. So, um, but other than that, it was good. We had a good week. We took Mia uh, to a pumpkin patch. Oh, yeah. That was really fun. Uh, Arelli's uh, little girl. And we don't have children. We were going to borrow somebody's children, but we were like, we don't know who to, whose children to borrow. Um, but it was still fun. We had a great time. Mia's still little, so she can't really jump and stuff. So I'm excited to for her to grow up and then be able to take her to these things. Um, I wish my niece was here. But other than that, we had a great week. We also played tennis on Sunday. We, still sore. You're sore. Um, it was fun, except, except obviously like with prep, I'm exhausted. I was exhausted on Sunday. Chris looked at me and he was like, I don't know how you're breathing right now. <laughs> but all right, let's get into today's podcast episode. I just have some questions for Chris because I want him to answer them. And that way you guys get a little bit in, to know him and then our relationship. All right, you kinda, ready? Kind of scary. You kind of scary. Stop. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. All right. How does it feel to have your dream car? It is not my dream car, but it is one of my dream cars. Okay. And honestly, I, I mentioned this to Jasmine earlier, like when I for a couple days or a week after I had it, um, you know, having the car before this one was much more surreal just because it was my first six figure car. Which one was that? The GTS, the Mercedes GTS. Right. The, it's a yellow one. If you guys follow me on Instagram or follow Jasmine, you guys probably saw it. We didn't post it too much because it wasn't really a car I wanted to have, but it was something I was interested in. It was one of my dream cars. Yeah, it was one of your dream yeah. cars. And she actually uh, ran across a, um, a screenshot that you took of it when yeah. you first saw it. Yeah. So it was someone's dream car. It just wasn't my dream car. But yeah. that one felt significantly more surreal because it was such a big step right? Uh, as to where we were before. So that one actually made me cry. when We were both when, in the car. <laughs> like a couple of days into owning it, we were just driving and it was just like a surreal moment that we were able to achieve. Yeah. Having that as well as your car. I think we already had your car, we right? We had already had my car and then we got yours and no, then, we got no, we got yours first, and then we had mine. But um, it was one of those things, moments where like it wasn't even. It was you, you couldn't plan it. Like we were both dri we were driving down the road. I remember, and it was like quiet. And then we look and then, over, and, and we're uh, both. And the like, song that was playing too was talking about like making it in life. So yeah, it's just, we look over, and we're both like hysterically <laughs> crying. Like, don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me right now. You're gonna make it worse. But yeah, that was uh, surreal. But you know, owning this car, I love it. It's what do you have now? It's a 2018 911 GT3. Um, it's it's significantly more expensive than the last car, but it it's not. It doesn't feel like a grand achievement for some reason. But I am happy with it. I plan on keeping this one for a long time. Yeah. Until one of my actual like stupid dream cars can can actually happen. Yeah. But yeah. That's what it feels like. Sort of yeah, feels like. I will say that. I think I asked him the other day. I was like, how does it feel? Because he had been wanting the Porsche for such a long time. Um, but I feel like I asked him, I was like, I feel like we're happy. You're happy. I see it. But it's not the same amount of like, of, like it didn't affect you as much as when we got the Mercedes. And then he explained that. And I was like, actually, yeah, you're right. I guess that's why it was such a big step for us when we got the Mercedes. And now that we have this car, it's amazing to have but i think 
I don't know. It's just it's just different. It's different but I will say that reason. it dry. I love the way it drives. Oh yeah, I mean it's a beast it's, of a car. Sounds the Mercedes amazing. drives was, was drove amazing, but I didn't like how long the front was. So I was always really scared to drive it because um, the front part of the car was so long. Now with the Porsche, it's it reminds me of my 350Z back in the day. He's only let me drive drive it once by myself. I've offered you just with you wanted. in the car, but I I wanted to drive it the other day, and you were like. No, I'm driving it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but it's amazing. I, I, I absolutely love the car. The Actually, like, the GT3 is one of my absolute favorite cars. Um, so we're really happy. I just wanted you to give your input on how it feels to have your dream car. Okay. All right. <laughs> what is the number one thing we struggle with the most in our relationship? Damn. Hmm. Number one thing we struggle the most. Mm-hmm. You already have something in mind? No. No? No. I know that I forget things a lot and it leads to a lot of arguments about miscommunication. You know, there's just, I don't know if, I feel like most guys are like this. In fact, I I almost guarantee that most guys are like this. I just don't think some things are important. So then I just kind of forget about them. Or if they are important, I just actually forget. And then I just don't relay that information to you. And then... (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that's honestly our most reoccurring issue. Yeah, that you forget. Yeah, I, and honestly, like I didn't, when I was ask when I was thinking about asking this question, I was thinking I was like, I don't know. I mean, I think that is. I think it's that the and sometimes with me, it's like the assumption that you already know things. So it's the miscommunication. It's funny because we communicate great when it's important things like emotional or something's going on in our relationship that we need to sit down. But with the little things, sometimes we forget or I already assume that I told you vice versa because uh his friends will come up to me and be like oh yeah i'm doing this and this and this and i'm like what are you talking about so like, yeah chris didn't catch you up i'm like no like i am like no i don't know any of what's going on because like i just forgot to tell you but literally just happened the other day we planned the gym how we're going to do the gym he he's leaving to the car meet and he's taking his gym back his his gym shirt and i'm like what are you doing i'm like in bed i'm like what are you doing guys it was also 7 30 in the morning i was not i was like what are you doing he's like I'm taking my shirt. I'm like, no, you were going to, you're going to come home after the meet. And then we're going to go to the gym. I told you this last night. We went over it twice. He's like, Oh, I forgot. Whatever. He dropped his shirt and he left. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, you don't listen. Sometimes I feel like you don't listen, but I, it's what I think that's the issue is like, sometimes you just want, sometimes you genuinely do forget, which I'm fine. Cause I know when you're forgetting. And sometimes I know that it's because you're, you're not really paying attention or you just don't think it's and important. Then sometimes she's talking and I pretend that I heard her. Wow. And then I don't, I didn't hear you. Wow. Okay. Well, good to know. Good to know. It's because, you know, I just like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> That's why I don't share certain things with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but then you get upset when I don't share, like, sometimes I don't share, like, girly things with him. Or, like, sometimes we talk about with the girls and you're like, you haven't shared that with me. I'm like, yeah, because sometimes you act like you care and then sometimes you act like you don't. So pick one. All right. How do you feel about luck or when people say we just got lucky? I mean, there is a there is such thing as luck. You know, there's times where an opportunity comes and you just, like, got lucky. Like, it was just presented to you out of nowhere But the fact that we got lucky makes no sense because we've been working and, you know, the things that we have are a result of our hard work and the opportunity lining up. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, there's a lot of people who have been given the same opportunities as us and they weren't able to make anything out of it. And even now, if we tell them exactly what we do, they can't do it themselves because they don't have that base established that we already do. Mm -hmm. Uh, As far as our training, we have experience as far as, you know, um, anything that has to do with your social media. It took years to build your social media platform. And that wasn't a one man job, you know, Uh, so that that takes into account OnlyFans. It takes into account No Evil, all your sponsors and everything. That's support that we've been building over the years. So by no means is that luck. And I think anyone that is actually part of the social media scene understands that it's not as easy as just signing a contract and then you can make a living out of it because that's not at all the case yeah yeah yeah. no i think the key word there is opportunity you everyone's given some people aren't i understand aren't given the same opportunity but the issue is that when you believe that you are meant for more and you carry that energy 
literally the whole space that you're in, your whole world will just change and you'll start getting little signs of opportunities. The issue becomes, or not the issue that where things change for you is if you take that opportunity, I feel like for us, we've taken a lot of the opportunities that have been given our way, or at least tried them to see if they worked out. Right. I think a lot of people, um, don't take the opportunities because they're like, Oh no, this is hard. This is going to be a lot harder than I think. Right. And, um, you and I, we've taken, even now, like with some of the things we're working on now, we do our best to, okay. If something, if, if someone reaches out and they are saying like, Hey, we think we can do this better for you or whatever. We take the time to hear them out. Or if we think it's convenient, not convenient, but if we think, okay, this is like the real deal. It's not just spam. Yeah. Um, and we're like, let's, let's hear them out. So I think a lot of people just don't want to waste their time or don't take the opportunities, um, that they're given. And I feel like with us, we do our best to take, if the opportunity seems right for us, we take it. I just saw someone post, uh, like, a one of those motivational, like they reposted a motivational post and it said, stop trying to drag some, stop trying to drag everyone up with you. Not everyone wants to level up. Mm -hmm. And that is like. That's very true because there's people who we personally know who have been given literally on a plate opportunities to be better and they're not taking it. Some people are just okay with being normal and mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. Uh, but not every person is made to be extraordinary. By no means am I saying we're extraordinary either, but not every person is meant to grind and to be better yeah. than they were before. And I think not, I think as you get older, you realize that it's like what Andy Frisella has always said, you can't fucking teach ambition. Yeah. You can't teach drive like that. You can't, you not, you cannot give that to a person. Like they have to have that instilled in them. They have to have that inside. And if you're not with someone who has that inside or your, your friends don't have that inside, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to get them out of it. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, you could motivate someone, mm -hmm. but motivation is only going to last so long until uh, dedication and the will to keep going has to take over. Motivation yeah. is only going to get you started and the rest is up to you. Yeah. Okay. Good response. All right. Are women who drive sports cars considered hot? Is like, is that a thing? I mean, it's impressive. Uh, I don't think necessarily sports cars. I think if you knew how to drive stick, I'd be like, damn, that's fucking sexy. Cause that's like, why? Why that's, am that's I ever going to need that not very women actually take the time to learn. And it's, it's part of like what I like. Like if I would well, buy me a jank ass car and I'll learn how I to drive. I try showing you on a jank ass car. You try showing me in your S 2000. That at the time was a jank ass car. Not at the time it was your prized possession. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If I like I, you tried teaching me on an uphill in your prized possession car at the time. And I literally got so frustrated and scared because I thought I was going to fuck it up. And I was like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. So I just stopped. <laughs> I think now if I got a jank ass car, I would be willing to try it. All right. We're, we're about to go buy some manual Corolla 2008. Tell Georgie to hook it up. Tell him if he gets some beat down <laughs> car in the shop to, to give it to me, to get to sell it to us. And then I can learn. Yeah. But sexy, uh, sexiness does not come from driving sports cars now. Yeah. So like if you saw a girl like coming I out think of a, if like you're already 80s. sexy and you have that, then yeah, it's, it's like, Oh shit. Okay, cool. Would you think that it's hers or would you think it's her like significant others? I guess it's just the vibes. You know, if she comes off like stuck up or pretentious, it's probably just bought, but I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, it'd be on a basis All situation. Right. All right. Just wanted to know if it was like a hot thing. Okay. What is your number one fitness or gym tip that you could give? Time. I'm, uh, so right now, I know that it's kind of trendy, you know, to be shredded, to be all ripped up because that's what social media is saying looks good. But, you know, if you're young, take the time to just build, eat right, grow, because putting on muscle takes years. I mean, I'm eight years into this and I'm up what is it from 125 to 200? So I'm up like 80 pounds, but I still look small and nothing is going to help me other than time. So the more time I spend bulking and putting on muscle, I'll look better when I cut. Cutting is always going to be there. The shreds are always going to be there, but the time that you waste cutting down is time that you could have been bulking. So if you're young, just bulk 
stay healthy though. Don't get fat, and you know, look for the shreds later. I think that's that's really good. That's a really good answer. Like for the girls too. I feel like I spent so much of my young years trying to be shredded for I don't know God knows why. Instead of focusing on like actually building and like building my glutes and building. Well, at the time, too, that I started, we didn't have social media. We yeah. didn't have any of the stuff we know now. We had bodybuilding.com. Yeah, but knowing what I know now, if I was 18 getting into this, I would have been bulking hard as fuck mm -hmm. and then cutting. Yeah. And I probably would have looked better now instead of just maintaining, 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 bullshitting, bullshitting, bullshitting. Yeah. But, I mean, resources weren't the same back yeah. then. I mean, I fucking started with doing bicep curls and fucking trap exercises instead of glute thrusts. Gl glute thrusts, hip thrusts were not a thing when I first started. We never, that I don't- I'm sure they were a thing, we just- We just didn't know about it. Yeah, yeah, we didn't know about it. Social media wasn't anything so where people, you could see people doing it. Like I literally would go to bodybuilding.com and take exercises from that. From probably from, uh, what's his name? Uh, I don't remember. Jim Shark guy. What's his name? Steve Cook? Steve Cook, yeah. No, was, I don't he, even remember. He was one of the biggest uh, bodybuilding ones. Yeah, so, um, yeah, t time is a good one to be patient, especially with everything, especially with any kind of yeah, progress Yeah, even if you you're have. cutting, time. Time, yeah. Nothing could, you have to think, if you, especially if you're just starting, it probably took you like five years to put on the amount of fat that you have on your body now. So why are you expecting to lose it within a month? People have to realize that it takes time to achieve a goal. Like you could take all the stuff in the world and you're st it's still going to take time. There's no shortcuts to your physique at all. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. There's no shortcuts to it. I mean, fuck, I'm like starving, not starving, but, you know, lo little food and shit's in the cardio. We were just talking about it. And I'm like, all this just to lose this much <laughs> fat and I could eat. A burger and a pizza this weekend and gain it right back in two days where it took me five fucking weeks to lose it. Yep. It's insane. It's frustrating, but it's a it's a really cool process because you really get to dig deep and learn about yourself and see how much you can push yourself. So, all right. Next question. If you could describe our relationship in one word, what would it be? Go, go reset the camera. Okay. <laughs> in one word, describe our relationship. Um, do you have a word in mind already? No. One word? Uh -huh. If you could describe our relationship in one word, what would it be? I don't know. Not, 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 nothing comes to mind right away. We'll come back to this one. Nothing comes to mind? Nothing. Really? That, that sums up our, our whole relationship. No, no, nothing comes to mind. Partnership, teamwork. What the hell? You're, that is that is not at all the direction. I, I was trying to think of like what kind of adjectives about our lifestyle. No, I think partnership is really good. Partnership's a good one, but I wasn't going in that. I was thinking like luxurious, adventurous, like what the hell? Why? Because uh, that's I guess that's the way I was thinking. I wasn't thinking of like I don't know. I was thinking deeper. You were thinking surface level. <laughs> I guess. Okay. All right. We'll come back to that. Think about it. All right. What is, and it's okay. You can answer this. The, the I want you to answer this question. The. It's a trap. No. <laughs> it's a trap, honest. guys. Guys, I'm scared now. No. What is the number one thing you notice about a woman when you see but, her? Her butt? Butt is the first thing. And if it's a nice butt, then I look at the face. Really? Yeah. So what makes the butt nice? Just shape. For me, it's shape. It's not size. Just a shapely butt. So she has a shapely butt. You look at her butt. So if you're walking down the street or you're walking into a restaurant, the first thing you notice is a girl's butt. What direction are they walking? Are they walking towards me? Then obviously if, I, I see their face first. Yeah. If they're walking away from me, then yeah, I'm going to look at the butt. So if you see a girl that's walking, have you ever, I mean, you, I don't think you've ever done this with me, but if you've ever been by I've yourself. I've never turned around. To look. You, yeah, you've never turned no. around to look? Like if you see a girl's pretty. No. She walks Even by on you, my having... own, I feel like I just don't ever want to risk looking back and then them looking trying to make eye contact. I'm like, oh shit, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, for, I for real have never turned around for anyone. Okay. Not even me? Damn. I don't think so, no. I mean, like, obviously now because yeah. you're my wife, I look at you all the damn time. But yeah. like I think when we first started, I never wanted to get caught checking you out. Oh. 
Okay. All right, but I, I mean, I figured it was going to be the butt for you. Figured he's a butt guy. All yeah, right. You can have itty bitty titties. We still good. Yeah. Itty bitty titties. Itty bitty titties. You, what'd you have when we started? A's? A's. I was a, like a slight B. I was a slight B. You were a B with some tissue paper in there. Oh, wow, <laughs> guys. Damn, throwing shade. No, I was a B and then I ran cross country and I went oh. down to an A. And then the nurse looked at me hey, before my birthday. Hey, those uh, wonder push-up bras from Victoria's Secret, they magic. <laughs> <laughs> you and remember they, those? Until they came off. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I had a ton of those. You remember? Yeah. The fucking heavily <laughs> padded. Literally, your, your boob just sits on top of the pad. <laughs> oh, my God. so true if you guys remember i don't know if victoria's secret still has these because sure, i don't i don't buy i don't bras buy out. um bras that much and literally i'm always braless um but those wonder bras and they had the padding was like this yeah, the thing. whole bottom half was just pad <laughs> and then your boob just sat on top yeah so it looked like i had big tits yeah yeah, yeah that was nice and then you took them off and it was like <laughs> 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 you don't have a sound effect, sound effect for that <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Is there a sad one? Oh. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> I'm dying. Oh my god, I'm dying. I'm crying. Oh my god. Okay, girls. Um, no judgment if you wear them. Um oh, I, I used to wear them all the time. It's just funny. Me and my cousin Salali used to wear them all the time. We'd go and when Chris and I would break up, let's hit the club, girl. Let's With hit that the club. Double bra sometimes too. <laughs> uh all right. Um what was the last thing? That made you cry. That made me cry. The last thing. Well, I mean, Rosalia. Yeah, that's what I was listening saying. to her. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't even know what song it was because, like I said, I'm not a diehard fan. I know most of her new music, but this song, I don't even know what song it was. It was, uh, but it was just like her voice, her vocals, and then she herself was staring up during. It. She was crying. Yeah, so during I was the like, concert. Fuck. Yeah, it was very special. It was a very special moment. Um, yeah, that that's the last time that. You cried. I just wanted to see if you remember that. All right. What is one thing you wouldn't spend money on? Would not spend money on? I already know. But <sighs> this one's like kind of broad. So. Yeah. Like. I would say I would never buy a boat. Literally. That's what I wrote. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Because I've. I. I love the boat life when we get, we get to rent a boat in Miami and stuff yeah. like that. Or when we go to like Travis and I love the boat life. So I've always told him like, Oh my God, I would love to, I would, I don't know if I would love to own my own boat, but I, I think eventually like renting a boat. Cool. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know that I ever, ever buy a boat just because you, I know that we'd probably use like one time a year and I yeah. just don't feel like the ROI return on investment is that great for a boat. Yeah. And then their money pits. If you have them sitting in the water, cause they start decaying and rusting on the bottom, maintenance, dock fees. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be worth it if you live somewhere where you're like in Malibu and your fucking yeah. boat is docked right there, right? Just right off your porch. Yeah, yeah um, that would be amazing if that was our life. Um, but if, like if we're still in Houston and we're renting a boat somewhere, like like keeping our boat somewhere, it just doesn't make sense. But I, I so I get you. I just just renting in one when we go to Miami or whatever. That was fun when we did that. I love renting boats. All right. What? I'll ask this, this one next. Um, if you could pick a new skill to learn right now, what would it be? A new skill. Damn, that could go so many ways because there's so many things that I wish I would have learned early on in life. I wish I would have known how to play the violin or piano. I think learning an instrument would have been... I don't know that it would have changed my life any looking at how it is now, but... It's something I've always wanted to do. And I've always wanted to be really great at driving race cars. I feel like that would have changed my life because I, I actually have like an actual passion slash interest in it. I mean, but that's a new skill that we've talked about you taking oh, a class but, for but now. But I'm, I'm too late in life to actually make something out of it. Right. Now. And then uh, I think if I were to pick a skill based off of our current, like, like what our life is like now. I guess I could just be fucking amazing at photography, but we we could hire people for that too. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I guess that's a three part answer. No, I just I didn't mean anything for like our work related. I think 
we we learn when we need to learn but yeah. we are good at hiring people who are better at, yeah. at us than for things like that but i was thinking i figured you would say something like with the race car stuff which you know we want to get you courses for that um or the guitar playing like the guitar how i like it that'd be cool for you to play it you could do it you already have picks on your nails yeah um watching them play is i love what kind what kind of it's a 12 string guitar but the way that it's played it's uh it's for like um, like corridos tumbados, for corridos, like yeah. that. That is my favorite. I can literally like the whole concert for Fuerza Regida. I was just staring at the guitar guy. I was like, he's like, -ra -ra -ra. it's just so like I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, I don't know what my new skill would be. Oh, I think right now if I would just pick a new skill right now to learn, I've told you this is um, learning how to sew. Oh yeah, you have said because that. I think it would yeah, help us come out in a clutch. lot. Yeah, it would come in clutch a lot with our weirdly proportioned bodies. Yeah, <laughs> is it hard if you know how to sew? Is it hard to learn? Okay, um, let me know because I would. Shit, I know sewing machines nowadays pretty much do it for you. You just have to know how to start yes, and but end. I have it. a fear of like catching my... your finger. Fuck yeah, that. that that's a fear of mine. Ooh. Like when I was watching your grandma do it, she's just like. Eh. Yeah, that's eh. that's sixty years of experience. I right know. There. I was like, no, no, no. All right. Do you think your zodiac sign is a good representation of you? Based off of what I've been told, I think it is, but I've never taken the time to actually look Learn. up what the attributes are for a Scorpio. But you know, That's everyone's Scorpio. like, "Oh yeah, you so are a Scorpio." Yeah, so. he's very much a Scorpio. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, and your mom is the same way. Like, I didn't know your mom was a Scorpio until like a few years ago, and I was like, "Huh, makes sense. Makes sense." All right, um, almost done. Two more. What is your favorite part of your day? Favorite part of my day? I, I I love my day. Honestly, there's not a single part that I that I don't like. You know, I like waking up. I like waking up on my own terms, even though now it's been off to your alarm. But it feels good, you know, waking up next to you without having any pressure of like having to go to work or rush to get my day started. And then working on my own terms is great. You know, I start and stop when I want take poop breaks when I want that breaks when <laughs> Night, want. that breaks when I'm really tired. Um, and you know, Jim love killing it at the gym and then ending my nights with you is always great. Yeah. Like just that chill time where you're unwinding. It was good. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about that this morning. I was like, when I was on the Stairmaster and I wrote this question, I was like, I wonder what his favorite part of the day, obviously he loves going to the gym. I think that's, uh, that's what you look forward to. Cause it gets us out of the house and stuff. Yeah, that's what I look forward to. But right now I'm in a rut. Yeah, I know. and I, I'm just kind of like going because it's something that I know I need to do, but I'm not motivated. But I'm still doing it. Yeah, I mean he has personal reasons um, that he's going through this. Fight. My liver's just still fucked up, so I can't do what I want to do. So yeah, just yeah. gotta wait till that gets better. Yeah. So. If you know how to fuck, how to fix your liver. We doing, uh, I'm doing pomegranate juice for antioxidants, blueberries, and then taking a bunch of supplements and vitamins, but yeah, taking a while to come down for some reason, whatever. I think, I think I love right now. Like I enjoy all the parts of my day. I do too. I'm, I'm, I think more than anything, I'm just so grateful for life that not even for life. And I'm so grateful for us, for the hustle that we've had, because I remember my biggest, our biggest goal when we were younger was where we both want to work on our own terms. Always. Yeah. So and, that, yeah. And you right. having to leave to work when we first moved here oh, yeah, was like miserable. I hated it. I hated it. And I literally prayed to God and I was like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck it takes to do so he can wake up with me. And thankfully we created that. And obviously nowadays I'm the one that gets up a little bit earlier because I go to my spin class at 30 and because I have an hour in the morning of cardio, I wake up a little bit earlier because if I don't wake up early, it pushes our whole yeah. breakfast to like 11. So I just, I don't wake up like super early, but 8.30 is the time that I wake up. But I'm so grateful for that because it, I, to, to be honest, my favorite part of our day though, like my absolute favorite is breakfast. Like I just love, I just love sitting down with you and like starting our day the way that we start. I think we finally have like a good morning routine. Everyone has a different morning routine. Some people meditate together. They read together, whatever ours is. Chris has breakfast ready for me. We have our coffee ready. We watch a 30 minute episode, whether it's the office, um, modern family, what a good lively show. 
and we just sit and we cuddle with each other after we eat our breakfast and we sip on our coffee. Once the show's over, we start our day. But it's like a really good way for us, for me go, going, when I get up, I'm like, go, go, go. So I come back and I get to like spend some quality time with him, which I really enjoy. What were you going to say about working? Oh, just, you know, uh, I really like where we're at in life right now because we make a good amount of money and we have almost complete freedom. Uh, you know, there's no sense in making a shit ton of money and having so many responsibilities to where you have no freedom. So I kind of feel like we're in a very good place right now. But our hustle is still like we're we're about to revamp our hustle. Yeah. So hopefully that freedom sticks around. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, right now I feel like prep is taking yeah. freedom away yeah. completely. Yeah. Um, that's been a little bit hard. And we'll make a podcast episode probably like in two weeks about that. Um, just for any competitors who are listening or um, your significant other competes. Um, but it, right now that's been the hardest shift is that prep is taking priority. And that's like, that's all I'm thinking about all day, every day. It's got to be my first priority or I won't be successful. Right. Cause everything, I got to plan ahead for everything, my meals, my cardio, everything. So everything else has kind of fallen a seat behind. So trying to balance it all is a little hard, but, um, yeah. All right. Last question. What is your definition of a healthy relationship? <clears throat> I know what, our relationship means when it's healthy, but everyone's relationship is going to be different in terms of what is healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just communicating with your partner what your expectation expectations are and what your needs are and making sure both are fulfilled and as well as their expectations and needs. And I feel like what we do would not work for anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> It'd probably work for some people, but not, not very many people. Um, I think we have a healthy relationship, but I mean, if, I think uh, from the do. outside, from it pro that, yeah. it probably like, nah, they, they got yeah. a weird ass relationship, but I think we have a healthy relationship, but I agree. I think it's what you said. I think it's figuring out, speaking, communicating your wants and needs and, f and listening to what your partner's needs and wants are. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like, um, I feel like couples are also weird in public and I feel like we aren't that weird in public. Or maybe that's just like my take. What do you mean? Like there's some couples that just aren't touchy or show love or show that they're even in a relationship in public. But I feel like we still act the same inside and outside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or right. maybe they just act like that at home, too. I don't know. I mean, we're more, I think we're more obviously sexual at home. But <laughs> but yeah, we're, yeah, but we're very lovey-dovey towards each other. Um, probably out of all our friends, we're like the most lovey-dovey. That's what I'm saying. We show you know, a lot of affection towards each other. Like not, not, not like PDA affection, yeah. but like, I don't know. And recently we've been in a crazy ass sink. Oh yeah. We've been in a crazy sink where he'll be thinking about me and I'll be thinking about him. So we'll like, I'll go look for him and he'll come look for me and we'll like meet in the middle. It's just like a weird thing. Like it's happened like three times already. And we're just like, what the fuck you were like in my mind. So like the other day, I was eating my meal. I was cooking because I had to prep and he was outside washing the car. And normally um, when he's outside washing the car, I'll help him if I can. But if not, then I'm just like doing laundry, wash, watching a show or whatever. I'm like doing my own thing. Right. So I was eating my meal. I just wanted to eat it. And I was watching TV and I was going to keep watching TV. But in my head, I was like, I miss him. Like, I really miss him. Let me just finish eating my meal and I'm going to go outside and sit with him. So as I'm coming outside what did you say? I was already standing up to reach for my phone to text you, you to say to come kiss me. <laughs> yeah, because you because you missed me. And I was like, what the hell? It was like the weirdest thing. It happened again at the gym and somewhere else. And it's just like right now we've just been in a really good thing. So I, I, I like that. But yeah, I think everyone's definition of a healthy relationship is different. As long as you're OK with your relationship, that's all that matters. You know what other people think about your relationship. They're going to think whatever they want. You know, everyone is different, um, what they're okay with, what they're not okay with. As long as you're in a relationship that, you know, like Chris said, you know what your expectations are. They know what the, your expectations are. And you guys can communicate. I think that de defines a healthy relationship. Yep. All right. That's it. That's all my questions. Wasn't what? too scary. Wasn't scary, right? Uh, you didn't go back to. I still don't know. I st a partnership. Just came up with that. I think that's a good one. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. I, we're not, we're not that adventurous, baby. You're adventurous. I'm not. I mean, we're adventurous in the traveling part, but like adventurous. Yeah, we're not adventurous, but we like to do new things. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's it. I just wanted you guys to get a little bit to know him a little bit more. Um, every time someone comes up to me, it's always like, oh, my God, I love the podcast. I love the podcast with you and your husband in them. So you guys like him. Uh, I mean, I don't know. What's the like? <laughs> <laughs> Not many people do. OK, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, there was a question like that. I'm like, what do you what do you think people think about you? Because I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast episode. Hope you feel lucky because you're the first to know about my prep. So, so don't spoil it until I post on Saturday and be like, I knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't spoil it. Don't like comment. If I post on Friday, don't comment. Like can't wait for your competition. (laughs) Okay. So wait till I announce it on Saturday. There'll be a video or it's creating a video for me. Then when I announce it, be like, hell yeah, team Jazzy, let's go. And let's manifest that pro card. Okay, ladies, let's manifest it together. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in or watching. If you're watching from YouTube, don't forget we're on YouTube. You can watch me on YouTube. Um, You can see how my face is starting to look skeleton like. Uh, But thank you guys so much for listening. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. (laughs) 